It is time to start doing the mortise and tenon work on my timber frame. These three posts will be identical in the mortise and tenon placement. So we're going to go ahead and get these uh, quickly planed down to remove some of the rough sawn material and some of the mold that's built up, unfortunately. So that process of uh, running my hand power planer across these does a couple of things for me. One, it makes them look a little bit better. Now, these are rough sawn timbers directly from trees from my property, so I'm not trying to go for a finished, well, perfectly finished look. But as you could tell as I was planning, it cleans them up and makes them look a lot nicer. The other thing is it removes high spots, and all the high spots are things that, have, that cause you problems when you're taking dimensional measurements for your timber framing joinery. So getting rid of a couple of those high spots has always beneficial. We need to lay out a four inch tall by two inch wide tenon. So we go zero, then we go there, then we go here. Final ones are there, and there. And there. One, two, three, two, three, 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 Once we've used the saw to rough out our shape, you can see we have our line we have to pair back to. Tenons, we can use the block plane. I uh, like this, it works really well. Tenon with our chisel, because our chisel's too much wide, we got a long way to go. We got a lot of meat on there still. There you have it. I'm using my uh, center finder here, so we put that on here. My homemade one allows me to set the pencil a little deeper so I can find the center each time. So I know that this is the middle of the beam in this area. Uh, you can see the pencil is really tight inside my center finder and I'm able to move it up and down and have it stay where I want it. So once we've roughed in those corners with the uh, Dewalt uh, one inch chisel, 
I come back with my framing chisel, which is a true two inches, and I make sure I'm good. And if I'm not, I can just use body weight to true this up. In order to make sure that the hole from this side is exactly in line with the hole on the other side, I've taken a wooden dowel and I put a screw in the tip of it and that allows me to slide this in here and it snugs up in the hole. And we tap it and it leaves a mark where the hole needs to go. And rinse and repeat three different times. And start a layout. And these are done the same way based on the center of the beam, or post in this specific case. Now that we've removed most of that material with the Forstner bit, I have a template that I use for my router. And we're gonna run the router through here, which will give me a three quarter inch deep groove. So everything on these three posts has been identical up to this point. We cut the tenon, we cut the mortises here, and we cut three of the uh, diagonal brace support mortises down the middle. At this point though, um, two of these are going to need a diagonal brace support that come off of opposing corners in the building, and the other one needs to match a existing post that I already practiced on. So we have flipped them accordingly. So these two are rotated 90 degrees to the right, and this is rotated 90 degrees to the left, which will allow me to do all three mortises for the top beam in the correct location. So we've got them all lined up, and now we need to get them laid out and get the material removed. So this is a nice flat back, so I can just kind of slide right down here. And the weight and the pressure, with, without a lot of hammering, goes a long way. At this point, we've really got to check as we go. Looking pretty good. Take our chisel, just check our width all the way through. So it carries all the way through. It's a little snug in a couple spots. So there we go. Well, this is gonna wrap up the major mortise and tenon work for the garden shed. All the posts and beams and tie beams and scarf joints are all complete. I was able to do that here in my heated shop in the winter time. I'm gonna wait for a little nicer weather to start assembly of the building. We are gonna begin working on some of the girts and some of the rafters, but for now, we have wrapped up the mortise and tenon work here. 
couple quick tips, not all of them, but a couple quick ones. Um, a two inch wide framing chisel, timber framing chisel is an absolute must. This happens to be a Robert Sorby. I can't recommend this enough. It uh, works extremely well. A one inch or smaller size uh, chisel that you can pound on is absolute must in my opinion. Um, and then uh, one of these Wood is Good Co mallets. This is a 30 ounce mallet. Uh, it's an absolute must when you're timber framing this way. You can get by with some other tools, but the reality is this is kind of the bare minimum. Um, you notice I use a lot of power tools, routers and things like that to be more precise to get me to remove material in a way that allowed me to follow the edges of the mortises and things like that with the chisels as I got deeper in the pockets. But overall, very pleased with this. Hope you guys enjoyed, hope you got something out of it. Uh, I know I didn't cover the mortise and work a lot in excruciating detail. There's a lot of great videos on YouTube about that. This is just kind of an overview of what I'm doing to uh, get this garden shed constructed. And until next time, thanks for watching.